John, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Lynn. And condolences on the loss of Officer McDonald. Thank you. As I said time and time again, when an officer goes down in the city of Philadelphia, it affects, it affects everyone. It affects all police officers. And it's something we feel strongly about. I mean, we have to be able to take back the streets. We have to be able to do our job. We have to keep the pressure on the judges locally to be able to hold these people accountable for what they're doing. Whether you lose an officer in Philadelphia or Bakersfield, as, as Kevin pointed out, or anywhere in between, you all feel it, Absolutely. not just we're, when he's a member of your we're force. We're one, one big family. I mean, when one officer goes down, and that's, we devote a whole month of May of every year to, uh, to the police officers. Now, you heard Kevin use the term assassination when he was referring to what Daniel Giddings did to Officer McDonald. Would you agree with that assessment? Absolutely. Absolutely. Here's a guy who should have never been out on the streets of Philadelphia. The 38 days that he was on the streets of Philadelphia, once he was released, he wreaked havoc. He assaulted officers. Here's a guy who went to jail for shooting somebody in the kneecaps for fun. Uh, it, there's just I can't, there's no rhyme or reason to do something like that. What you have to look at is why he was on the street to begin with. I mean, nine Philadelphia police officers shot last year, five of them by parolees who were released early from the parole board. So let's talk a little bit about why he was out on the street. First, he had been given a sentence of six to 10 years, or six to 12 years, excuse me, when yeah. his original sentence could have been it should have much been longer than that. 22 to 45 years, he goes to jail. During the time when he is in prison, he has 537 days in segregation, which is in the hole, 27 infractions while he's in there. From the time that he meets with the parole board and they grant his release to the time he is actually released, whatever time, maybe a week or so, he has another infraction. He should have never been released if they had caught that. And how do you get thrown out of two state correctional institutions? I don't understand that. Then you turn around and you look. Uh, are people getting good at going to prison these days? Or are they actually being really rehabilitated? Well, you know, a lot of people were criticizing the original judge in this ca case, saying that she should have incarcerated him for a longer amount of time. But given the fact that he was, what, 17 years old when he was being put away, she exercised what she thought was good judgment at the time to say, you know, 10 to 12 years is a long time for someone who's 17 years old. Well, is that fair? Do I think it's fair? Absolutely not. Well, in hindsight, it certainly doesn't seem fair, but if, if a, a criminal is 17, do you give him the benefit of the doubt and give him the lesser well, part of the sentence? What I would do would bring in the person who he shot in the kneecaps and have them give an impact statement as to why he should not be released or why he should, I'm sorry, why he should have been sentenced at a high end of the sentencing rates. Those, those guidelines are put in place to be used, not to, not to continually and systematically go to the bottom end of the sentencing guidelines. And that's, we didn't sign up, Philadelphia police officers did not sign up to be executed. If you want to see more of this episode of It's Your Call, you can with Comcast On Demand. Using your Comcast cable, go to Channel 1, get local, CN8, and then choose It's Your Call, CN8. On air, online, and on demand.